Greetings everybody, Andy Jukes here again. Welcome back to Ride and Talk. Can you believe it's already more than eight months since we did our first live video podcast episode on connectivity? It was way back in September when we first discussed this topic and we were all delighted at the high levels of interest this podcast generated. We also received many great questions from the community that our product specialists just didn't have time to answer during the episode. But take it from me, they spent a long time afterwards making sure that everyone's questions were answered. However, your curiosity still remains high, so we decided it was time for us to reconnect on this topic, especially as there have been significant developments since then. Cast your mind back to that first episode, and perhaps you'll remember that we gave you a sneak preview of some TFT technology. And now, of course, this technology features in the new R1250RT, with its full HD TFT screen, among many other highlights. So our mission today is to focus on this next generation of connectivity as seen on the new RT with its smartphone-based map, map navigation. Last week, we put a shout out for your questions via our channels, and we'll be answering many of them during this podcast. But do also keep sending them to us while you watch today, and we'll deal with those as well. Anyway, because it's quite a technical podcast, I'm a little out of my depth, but fortunately, I've got the Geek Squad here with me. So I'd like to reintroduce you to Roman, who many of you will be familiar with from the first podcast, and Christian, who will all also be answering my questions, and your questions, of course. Welcome, guys. Hello. Hey, Hi. hey folks. So Roman, it's great to see that beautiful new RT in the studio. It's a lovely bike, and it's packed with connected technology. Have you ridden it yet? Oh, yes. So, I mean, sometimes our job is very hard. We had to do uh, lots of test rides, uh, thousands indeed thousands of miles going on that bike and as you might know from the last podcast I'm more like this roadster type of guy I had my R1250 R, um, R with me and so it was a kind of challenge for me to to really open up to that bike and I was so fascinated about the driving dynamics I mean it's it looks huge but once you get going it's just like riding smoothly so I really like this bike yeah, I think you surprised yourself at just how good it is. I haven't ridden it yet, but I can't wait. But can you tell us how everything connects with this new bike then? Yeah, so basically, um, if you look down at the bottom of the bike, the, the rubber part connects with the tarmac. That's very important. You should keep it like this. And we, of course, do have some new connectivity features, like you might have heard about already, the 10.25-inch TFT display here in split-screen mode. And you can also see it in full screen mode. So having a fully uh, blown map navigation. Of course, we still have the standard connectivity features like radio, as I said, navigation, media, telephony, if you like that. But most important for us is the riding and therefore the navigation. So why is all this tech running via the smartphone and why is it not installed in the bike? Uh, you, you might remember from the, the old times, and that's also how I started my first trips, you, you had a map. So the nice thing about the map was you can always plan while riding, well, not while riding, while making a coffee break uh, during your, your tour. Um, a map has the advantage of, of well, you can always take it with you, put it in your, in your trousers um, while on a tour. A map is a great planning tool as, as long as the wind doesn't blow it away. So what we wanted to do is we, we wanted to have the same situation. Having your smartphone always with you means you are always having your maps with you, your worldwide maps, which means you are able to do planning breaks everywhere and you can also have a look at your, at your old routes. And as you might think about, uh, well, smartphone on a motorbike, where, where should I put it? We've also thought about that. There is an option, a charging compartment with inductive charging. So if you take your smartphone with you, you start your route, route put it in there and just start driving. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. You have genuinely thought of everything. But is it the same BMW Motorrad Connected app that many of us know already? Yes, and first of all, uh, thank you for the community for that high rating. We really appreciate that. And that's why we packed the features from the already good one app to the new motorcycle and to the new bike. Um, it's like nowadays we have two kinds of vehicles um, out there in the market. And you have like the 6.5 inch uh, TFT display, as you know, for example, from the 1250 GS. And now it's the same app packed with lots of new features and different features to the RT. All right, then I've got loads and loads of questions to fire at you guys, so please bear with me, okay? So for anyone new, completely new, let's say, to this kind of connectivity, can one of you briefly explain why this is more than just a navigation app? 
Well, sure. Um, first of all, with, with that app on, on your smartphone for Android and iOS, um, we have like three main parts within the app. One of them is um, your stat of the, uh, status of the bike. So uh, what's your current fuel level? What's the tire pressure? Um, so everything that you need to know about the, the health of your bike. Second, of course, it's the navigation itself. So you have like the winding routes, you have like imports um, of tours, and you have, um, of course, um, the waypoint navigation. So going like to your favorite coffee place or something like that, or uh, the mountain and the lookout where you want to see um, the, the nature. And um, as we know, like motorcycle riding is about the experience during the ride on the bike with your bike. And so you have the option to record your rides and to integrate photos into that and then share it later on with your community like via Instagram or WhatsApp or whatever you like. Um, you can just pack all the information to that and share it to your friends. Okay, so the app does loads of things, but is it easy to set up? Yes. Well, it, it I, should be I, at I, least. I, I, I would dare to say yes. I mean, of course, it, de it depends somewhat on your level of technical knowledge, but, but still, it's basic Bluetooth pairing procedure, like you may know from your car or from any kind of connected, connected device. So if you're familiar with Bluetooth pairing, then, then that works. I, I hope you'll find it easy, but I think it's really kind of basic procedures. And if, I mean, the, the, the basic Bluetooth pairing is quite simple, and for everything else, the app will ask you for it. We do have okay, also, so uh, yeah, please. It looks like you've actually got some um, how-to videos and things like that on how to do it. So, but if I'm not actually confident in doing this, I mean, my kids say I'm a little bit of a dinosaur when it comes to tech. I can do the Bluetooth thing, but where can I find further advice? I mean, for example, in addition to the how-to, could I go and ask my dealer or? Yeah, you've, seen, you've just seen it briefly. Uh, we did lots of how-to videos. You've, you'll find them on the BMW Motorrad YouTube channel or simply by, by, by Googling for, for terms like r 50 rt and pairing. We're going to continue those YouTube um, uh, how-to videos. So we very much hope that after looking at them, I mean, it's about, you'll need two or three of those how-to videos to understand the basics. So if you invest those, let's say five to six minutes, you will pretty much grasp everything you need to know from basic app installment until pairing it with your bike and getting started. And as you said already, if, you, if that's not enough, then you can still go to your dealer, ask them, or what I would suggest, use our support functionality. In the app, you have the chance to get uh, contact to our support or under um, support.bmwmotorrad.com. You'll also find excellent support opportunities. All right, brilliant. Thanks, Roman. No excuses at all. So once my smartphone then, once it's stowed in that nifty air-conditioned compartment you mentioned, or, or maybe even in my jacket, can I then do everything I need to navigate without taking my hands off the bars? Yes, that, that's the whole idea behind that. So if you like put your smartphone in the charging compartment on, on the vehicle itself, um, as you already know from the uh, navigator itself, um, we have that multi-controller here on the left handlebar. And um, the idea behind that is we have now massively extended that functionality on your bike and everything that you need to do while riding, keeping your eyes on the road and drive safe, um, you can actually control everything via that multi-controller directly in the screen of your vehicle. Okay, what about the mapping itself? I mean, do I have to pay for the maps? No, it's included in the price of the bike. Okay, now I read somewhere that they're available for nearly the whole of the world. I'm going to ask you an awkward question now. Where can't I get maps for? And what's the reason for that? <laughs> no, that's a good question. So we, we tend to that we have like the, the whole map coverage. Of course, there are some countries that have uh, local restrictions and we are constantly working on them to, to get like the worldwide experience on the bikes uh, right into your smartphone and right into your pocket. Okay, now I'm often discovering new features on my smartphone that I didn't even know existed. So are there any hidden gems on this app that users may not even realize are on there? I very much hope that we didn't hide them too well. But um, I mean, sometimes it's difficult if you, if you have your first kind of um, experience with the bike, I strongly encourage simply to, to try it out. But still, I would like to show you some, some basic use cases. Let's, let's uh, think about the coffee break we were talking about. So. Um, 
let's let's go through that situation when you know that when you're on a tour um, and you decide what to do on the next day and somebody's planning the tour on 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 his smartphone pc whatever and everybody wants to have it on their app this was kind of complicated uh, in in the earlier times so what we try to do is um, make it much simpler planning it on the smartphone and you can easily share that gpx file um, as, you, as you see here, uh, Christian has been planning our next trip already um, on his smartphone simply by adding some waypoints, um, adding them to a route. Now he saves them, well, he changes to winding route and then he simply saves this file, which will result in a so-called GPX file, which is more or less the basic standard for, um, for navigation files. And then he sends it directly to my smartphone via messenger for instance whatsapp or whatever you would like to see so now now that's my smartphone site you see christian sent that file to me i click on open it with the connected app it will get imported and i have it on my smartphone so that's that's as easy as it gets so this is one of those things i would like to to show you and then we prepared another video. Um, maybe you can get it. So, you so writing in the studio is rather yes. complicated. So yeah. we so prepared <laughs> that. So that's that's actually me driving currently. And uh, what you can see is um, that we have like different screens on the motorcycle um, where you can like experience the whole navigation functionality on the bike. And um, you have like on the on the right side, um, you have like a, a small and left side, sorry, um, a small bar where you can like zoom in, zoom out of the map and find different functionalities, which is all controlled um, via the multi-controller. So we've packed a lot of different um, features um, to the navigation itself. It's not just zooming in and out, for example, but um, it's like a whole route preview. So imagine that you have a long route during the day and you want to see um, what is my uh, current position to the next maneuver? What is my current position to the next waypoint? And we try to like give you an easy access to these functionalities and then easy see what's more right about um, the whole day. And you, you should notice how exactly Christian was able to keep that 70 kilometers per hour because <laughs> that's not, not easy on the road. So cars were piling up behind us. But I mean, that's what we do for, for, for a good clip. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant job. I was I was watching uh, 69, 68. I think you did very yeah. well there, Christian. Absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, th thanks for explaining that to us. So so I think you really established quite well that with a bike like the RT in combination with the BMW Motorrad connected app, I no longer need my old trusty Navigator GPS unit that I've, I've had for years. But what about all the routes that I've still got on it? Can I transfer them somehow? Even I, I think you do have you no. Know, you know, until recently, you had a prehistoric Navigator three, as, as as far as I can remember. And if you manage still working, to, still yes, working. That, that's important <laughs> because uh, well, not you not necessarily need to to get it working. What you would need to do is uh, at least get the GPX files from that Navigator. Um, it is again the same story. You only need this standard format of GPX, which is stored locally on your navigator, maybe on, a, on an SD card inside it. Um, so simply plug it to your computer, get the rights from the navigator, the GPX files and send them on, on no matter what way to your smartphone. This can be done via, via email, for instance, to yourself or via online storage or maybe even via, via cable. Uh, you only need to get the GPX file on your smartphone, tap on the GPX file and say open with the connected app. And then it will get imported and you should be ready to, to go. If, if that was too complicated or too theoretical, we also made a how-to video exactly on, on that. So maybe you just check out our, our YouTube video channel. I, I'm getting paid to say a lot of get to our YouTube Motorrad video channel because um, Sven, my colleague, is then much more happy. <laughs> Well, absolutely. I'm going to take a look at that anyway, because, yeah, no, but that was a really good explanation. Thanks for that, Roman. And, and, and all this is seriously impressive, but I also know you guys never stand still either. So, you know, there are always new things in development. So come on, spill the beans. What's coming next, Christian? <laughs> well, that's a question we, we get asked a lot. And uh, we did notice that our community asked for a feature uh, for a long, long, long time uh, now. And um, we are proud now to present it uh, to you. It's uh, the login functionality with your BMW ID. It's the, the same ID that you already know and familiar with, hopefully, from the My BMW app. And um, 
one of these features is like, I want to sync my rides. I want to sync my rides to a different smartphone when I change my smartphone. I want to like um, save them and, and store them safely. And, and we liked and it will introduce that functionality um, to you. Um, it's coming out. Um, actually, we already started um, to roll it out to the different markets. So it will come on the different platforms, iOS and Android, um, the next weeks and months. So by the end of May, I think we should be done um, and brought that new function to all markets. And um, we are really happy if you share your experience with us and we will hear you and read your comments about that and try to uh, iterate on, on top of that new function. That sounds brilliant. Thanks for that, Christian. And let me just reiterate, all of the comments are read and acted upon. And, and, and as I said earlier, we've had plenty of feedback from the community. So why don't we focus the remainder of the podcast on answering some of your questions? So let's see if we can get the first of them up on the screen then and uh, have a, a mammoth question and answer session. Nice. OK, here's one from Luca. He's got the new 2021 RT, lucky him with the new FT, but he has experienced some problems. So he's asking you for the solutions. He, he, he says it's impossible to ask or make a call with the TFT ma maintaining the navigation map because when you start to call, the connection with the app in map mode drops out. So you're obliged to ride without the navigation map. Over to you guys. Okay, so we agreed on uh, giving the difficult uh, questions to Christian. I'm going to take the easy <laughs> ones. So, Christian, that's a difficult one. Yeah, and, and, it, and it's a technical question. So, um, we, we do know and we do see these, these comments um, from, from time to time. Um, there are different functionalities from smartphone to smartphone. So, usually what we're trying to do is to give you always at any point in time the map experience. Um, I think the question now was um, during a telephone call. So um, since we are projecting the map um, from the smartphone um, to your motorcycle, there are certain times where these projections got in the background and we're trying to figure out constant solutions to bring that back up. Usually it comes back up after the telephone call right away and you can experience the map. But mm -hmm. you're not um, uh, left alone. So if the map is not there, we still provide you with an error-based navigation. Mm -hmm. I do know that's not that good as a map, but you're not lost during the navigation. Which is the most important thing. So hopefully uh, that explains uh, your question, Luca. Okay, we've got from one from Nicholas here, who's also lucky enough to get a 2021 uh, R1250R. Now he's tried to connect his Scala Rider Q3 to the TFT, but it refuses to pair. Uh, he's guessing that the Q3 is maybe too old and isn't supported, but he has no idea which headset to buy that will now work seamlessly with the TFT. Can you help him, guys? I mean, that's also a technical question, but, but rather more, more easy, product so questions more was like, your... like for me, okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, congratulations on your new bike. So n new is good. And, and unfortunately also in, in the case of uh, in-helmet communication systems. Um, first of all, I'd like to point out that we cannot know what the current uh, firmware upgrade software of any manufacturer of a um, communication system does. Basically, it's like the, the latest versions, not older than two to three years, generally work. Uh, and in many cases, the manufacturers offer firmware upgrades on their website. If you're thinking about buying a new system, uh, in most cases, the manufacturers also offer kind of compatibility metrics. Um, that's also a difficult track, like smartphone-based map navigation compatibility matrix is also difficult. Um, however, they, they provide a kind of matrix showing you uh, about compatibility to, to the BMW Motorrad uh, TFT. If they don't, I strongly encourage you to, to ask either a dealer, if you may try it out, or uh, directly contact the support of the uh, communication system manufacturer because they know what they are compatible with. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks. Good answer, Roman. Okay, let's have the next one. Okay, it's from Sean Maloney. Mm -hmm. Will you be releasing software updates for the TFT? And will these updates allow for the use of virtual assistants like Siri, Hey Google, etc., etc.? Mm -hmm. Oh, that, that's a cool request. Mm -hmm. um, I think we should think about that. Mm -hmm. um, I would really like to point out that well, those, those assistants or those functionalities, it's always like the same. We, we have a kind of roadmap of our own, but we are really listening to what you as, as customers say. So uh, if you like those functionalities, I strongly encourage you to use our feedback channels, use um, channels like the, the app stores and simply 
tell us what you would like to do because we need we need orientation and um, assistance are a cool feature I mean especially on a motorcycle but there was a second part to that question will there be updates on the TFT and I would like to take the opportunity to point out that um, it is that is not a smartphone it is a motorcycle and um, many people have the impression um, that as soon as there is a new software version for the TFT out there that they need to get it that is not true please trust your dealers uh, if it makes sense to put a new software on your bike because in many cases we just need to upgrade the TFT because a new bike like now the R50 50 RT has come to the market and that's why we we, we get a higher um, version number. That does not mean that there is any necessarily any kind of um, change for your software. So please trust your dealers. Trust your dealers, that's the message. Okay, thanks for that, Roman. Okay, can we have the next question up on the screen, please, guys? Okay, this one's from Nigel Donkin. Mm -hmm. Why is the sat-nav not embedded in the screen without having to use a phone? It's madness, he says, and in practical in areas where there is no phone signal. Madness, yeah. according to Nigel. What do you say, guys? Oh, well, that's a good question, and we thought about that as well. So um, why is it not included in, into the uh, TFT screens right away? So um, you guys know we started developing the new app since 2000 and 2017, mm -hmm. and um, we constantly enhance uh, these functionalities, and we like to build on that experience upon. So that's why we use the app on the one hand. Um, on the other hand, um, if you have no cell phone connection, well, you, we got you covered. Uh, since you can download the maps uh, to the, into the app and then use it offline, uh, you do not need for every use case um, a cell phone based um, connection to, to like any backend. Um, if there is no connection, well, then some of the functionalities like um, real-time traffic information is hard to transfer to a smartphone without any connection. But as soon as the connection is back up, these data get um, updated again. But using the navigation, just download the map from the country you like and you're good to go. I mean, the good thing about um, if you're in a situation where you don't have a cell phone reception, you normally don't need uh, traffic information. Um, but, but indeed, we, as Christian said, uh, it is a full offline compatible system and that's one of the most important features. And I also would like to point out that we did have numerous requests saying, when will the app finally come to the RT? I still get the idea that it makes also sense to have a, a navigation directly installed on the bike. Um, different concept, we are offering that one, as we also said, uh, for the portability issue of your map. So we would like you to be able to take it with you. I, I hope you will be convinced by our offer. Simply try it out. It's not as mad as it sounds. And I think it's a quite, quite good experience if you're, if you're riding with it. Brilliant. Well explained, guys. Thanks for that. OK, let's have the next question on the screen, please. This one's from uh, Luca. Okay, favorites on the TFT. According to Luca, it doesn't manage more than 30 items. 30 items to me is a lot of favorites, but uh, maybe not to everyone. So over to you guys. Well, if it's just friends you store in there, then 30 would be fine. <laughs> I, 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 I think we should have a look at that. Uh, 30 <laughs> items is, is a many. So congratulations mm -hmm. to so many uh, favorite places. <laughs> Uh, must must be a good region, um, but we have a look at that. Mm -hmm. um, seems a, a bit low for you. So if it if it's not enough, we should think about it. But but again, uh, that's that's why I would like to really encourage you to to post your wishes because I mean we we sometimes need to well to best guess what what you would like to have, and if we get your feedback, we can improve. So we're kind of making history here on this podcast, aren't we? You know, we're just finding out what we really need, what the next steps may be, and then you guys are going to make it happen. No yeah, pressure at all. <laughs> episode three should be about sense of life in total. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Just to make things more difficult, let's have another question. This is from Jens. Okay, he's got a brand new R1250R. Mm -hmm. And on every ride, he gets a message that the e-call is not working. So can any of you help yeah. him with a solution for that? So that, that's not what you should experience. Um, but that's a good question that we cannot answer here because we would need to know details about uh, what's the software on your bike, what's happening. Of, of course, I mean, that's... Um, Quite unfortunate, it shouldn't happen, but I really um, ask you, please go to your dealer and have uh, it looked at. Um, we need to have a real look at the physical bike to, to solve that. 
Okay, yep, fair enough. You have to go to your dealer for that one, Jens. Okay, this one's from Ricky Tan. As the man says, I'd like to get the most out of my BMW motorcycle. Yes. When I export a GPX of a route that I've ridden on my new 1250R, I'd like to export all of the motorbike telemetry too, for example, lean angles, throttle, mm. brake, brake activation, etc. Mm -hmm. Is there any way to do this? I think currently not. Um, okay. Currently, we are exporting. Um, so, what we're using is like the standard GPX file to like re-import it to to other platforms because we wanted to gave the opportunity to share uh, like your, your recorded routes uh, within a certain kind of format that other platforms mm -hmm. can read. But I think it's a good idea to mm -hmm. like use that telemetry data and pack that into, for example, another file or the um, GPX mm -hmm. file itself, and then transfer it like, for example, to, to your computer. Mm -hmm. um, good request, thank you. <laughs> I keep coming in these requests, don't they? Fantastic. Okay, let's have another question up, please, guys. Okay, this one's from Wolfgang. Transferring routes from Basecamp. Only a track will be generated. Mm -hmm. I see no waypoints. I can choose exclusively or skip if needed. Mm -hmm. Am I wrong? Is he wrong? Is Wolfgang wrong? Not, not really. I mean, um, but there are different uh, op options that you, that you can go for. So, uh, first of all, if you tried it with an earlier version of our app, that was indeed true. So. Um, uh, from base can be only got uh, uh, got got tracks. Um, that was because we we first of all thought of preserving exactly the route that you've planned for. But then we realized a lot of people really are working more with waypoints. Some people even working with waypoint only lists. So simply putting some uh, some waypoints on their route and let the that the setnav system uh, do everything else. And so um, please. Try it again. Um, it will be. It, it is possible now to be able to have uh, both. You will get the the uh, a kind of um, dialogue showing you the the possibilities. You don't need to to use them all, but you can then go for the track, which will mean that you drive exactly the route that you've planned in Basecamp, or you can also import the waypoints, which will mean that you. Um, that you only use those dots on the map and our app connects uh, the lines between. And if you ever tried it again and it's still not working, then reach out to us and then you get help from us directly. Yep. Support yeah, email brilliant. as, as uh, posted in the app on the, on the fourth tab. There you can find our contact and we will do something. <laughs> Superb, and that's a, that's the message that I'm getting clearly. You know that if people get in contact with you, that you will be there to help them, and uh, that's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, There's no to. long chain <laughs> movement. <laughs> okay, can we have another question up, please, guys? Okay, this one's from Garth. Uh, will there be an update to the 2018 TFT to have split screen? I fully get that wish. Uh, to be honest, the new smartphone-based map navigation on the R1250RT makes use of the newest connectivity technology, also in terms of hardware that we put on the bike. So we need uh, more, for instance, um, more bandwidth in terms of we also need this kind of Wi-Fi connection to the, to the TFT display in order to be able to get a real map navigation working. So um, that's why we always have this kind of um, technology um, leaps where you can do something on one bike and not on the next. Our development colleagues are not standing still, except for Christine, who is pretty standing still at the moment. Yeah, it's it's currently it's yes. on, the, on the bike. But I think um, the, it's a really good question. And on the, on the um, like smaller screens, uh, we need to figure out um, what's, uh, the, what should be the best solution to really get the mapped experience to you. And um, I think there, there will be something um, like we come up with in, in future maybe. Um, there must be some more development yeah. put into that. Yeah. So uh, on the like large screen, it's kind of obvious. You have like the huge map on the smaller screens. Again, it's getting a bit more tough. Mm -hmm. We need to find a Thanks, solution guys. that it really fits on the 6.5 inch TFT um, that, that will uh, respect that we have limited display space. But we're working on things. I mean, he's working. I'm, I'm only talking. I'm from sales. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Okay, another question. Uh, this one's from Rambler358. Can non-BMW headsets, such as uh, Senna headsets, can connect to the bike for both rider and passenger? 
Yeah, abs absolutely. So um, privately, I'm having um, a Sena and a BMW headset. So I've connected the Sena headset to that bike as well, and it's working working completely fine. So I mean, as, as soon as you get it working at all to the TFT, you're free to choose. Uh, yes. As, uh, as far as I know, because honestly, I didn't try it out. Did you? With you? Yes. The okay. private. I, I use mm. my private um, headset from from time to time mm -hmm. um, on on the uh, BMW bikes, and um, yeah, I can confirm the sinners are working fine. Also Very for good. the pillion rider. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Good to know. Thanks for that, Christian. Okay. Next question, please. All right. This one's from Martin Hermans. Do you need to keep the phone unlocked to use navigation? If yes, any chance it will change? I often um, use other apps in combination with the navigation. Yeah, um, so on uh, Android, uh, we did manage that. Um, so on Android, you can just uh, keep your, um, your phone locked and we activate the display. So since we are projecting the map, we need some kind of active display on, on these smartphones. Um, on iOS, we're still working on it. Mm -hmm. So that's something okay. that we often experience with iOS. It's kind of more difficult. <laughs> Understood. OK, here's a question about the actual maps themselves. What are they based on? Google Maps, question mark? Uh, no, <laughs> we, we use TomTom, Tom, uh, one of uh, the map solutions that have uh, lots of different motorcycle experience. And we put that experience to our app. So it's not Google Maps, it's TomTom Tom Maps. OK, super. Short and sweet, like that. OK, next question, please. OK, here's a question from Jeff Henshaw. When will we get, mm, when will we get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto on our BMW motorcycles? Interesting question. Thanks for that, Jeff. I'm interested to know the answer to that. Uh, that's a question we get quite often. I mean, um, it, it's kind of obvious um, that you that you should think and uh, that we should think about that. Um, at the same time, we we were focusing on something quite different. What was important for us was that you get a really good riding and navigation experience for a motorcycle. I mean, some, sometimes we, we get asked, do you really think that you are better at digital solutions than Apple or Google? Uh, no, we don't, but maybe we are better at motorcycle riding. And that's why I mean, there was this picture of uh, Steve Jobs on an R60, 69S, I think. But uh, apart from Steve Jobs, I think we, we really do the motorcycle riding. And that's why we focused on getting a navigation app that is especially focusing on what you need on a motorcycle, like winding routes, uh, multiple waypoint planning, import and export mechanisms. And that also is optimized for a display on a motorcycle, as I pointed out lots of times, is that we need to have uh, huge font sizes, excellent readability to be able to, to really uh, well, get as few uh, or to at least um, well, make rider distraction as, as yeah, manageable as possible. And, and less, so. less as possible. Yeah, yeah. So as, as uh, you, you pointed out, um, we're not standing still uh, within development. So we uh, will have a look at new functionalities on, on the bike. Um, but um, we need to think about when's the, the optimal time um, to really bring the new experience to the bikes. And yeah, I mean, you, you might have noticed that, that until recently you were only able to use Apple Maps or Google Maps on, on Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And that's why it was not that interesting for us in the future because, I mean, that's not really motorcycle riding. As Christian said, we need to always to re-evaluate re re the situation. And um, I think as they now open for different navigation solutions, also other um, competitor um, motorcycle apps. I mean, that's, we, don't, we don't necessarily want you to use our app. That's not what, what our basic concern is. We want to have a motorcycle app that's optimized for motorcycle riding um, and bring it to you. And that's what we are working on. Yeah, it's all about the ride. I totally get that, Rome. Listen, we've run over a little bit, but I think we've got time for one more question, if we can. Have it on the screen now, please. All right, Randy Watson. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what's cool there, but I'll just keep going. So, so why is it necessary for the BMW Connected app to always collect geolocation data in order to function mm. properly? Why not you while using the app or ask next time? Those are functions, aren't they, that you can select. Is there a reason to track customers when they're not riding a motorcycle? 
Uh, Interesting. <laughs> so no, there there is there is no reason that we we tr want to track customers. So um, the the answer is a a more technical answer, but I hope I I can formulate it in an easy way. So always is a a rule within the smartphones where you can leave your display off on the motorcycles, and uh, the app is in background. We are not actively running in foreground, etc. And then we can bring the the navigation automatically to your bike. That's the always. Um, only during using the app is just meant need you to open the app, leave your display on, and that's while using. So you can choose both to have the whole experience and automatic experience. We always recommend to use always. Um, as soon as you're not connected to the bike, we do not listen to GPS and store that um, somewhere. It's all locally on your smartphone and um, that's why we don't do kind of, uh, we, we don't look at your geo positions or, or something like this. And, and some people are asking, and I don't know the answer because it's a technical and difficult one, um, <laughs> about how, how is it with um, uh, energy consumption? As far as I understood, as long as we are not actively using uh, the app, it is also not uh, using we, the geo position. No, we are just going then to standby and mm -hmm. trying to always optimize the battery consumption to less as possible. Brilliant. Wow. Well explained, guys. Thanks for that. Well, you know, loads and loads of topics you've covered already. And, and certainly this is a topic that can run and run. And like Roman said, we maybe we'll have to have a third version of this, but <laughs> we've got to bring things to a close for now. So well, we hope you've all out there, you found that really useful. But if you still want to know anything, do post your question in the comments and the guys will get back to you personally. They're not going home tonight. And remember to also, as Roman said earlier, to check out the how-to series of YouTube videos. There are lots of them up there covering all the important topics. So do search them up on the brand channel. Right, that's it for me for now. Thanks for watching. And a big thanks to Roman and Christian for explaining everything so well. If you've not done so already, why not download the app and start exploring? You definitely won't regret it. Bye for now.